Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Larkin, one half of the Stephen Mike Show. www.stephenmikeshow.com is up and running, where you can hear such shows as you're about to hear tonight. This is another edition of On the Mic with Mike, and I am pleased to have on MMA fighter, actor, rapper, LFC judge, the one and only Mr. Trap Gambino. Mr. Gambino, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How you doing, brother? It's a pleasure to be here. I'm doing well. First and foremost, as you know, I do a little something-something with the Lingerie Fighting Championship, so I was very happy to see you at those LFC events, man. Yeah, man. Uh, it kind of happened pretty random, but I'm glad it did, and it um, seems like it's uh, you know a part of the Destiny train. <laughs> well, I got to say, I know you were judging LFC 26, 27, 29, all great events. I got to ask you, what would you think about you know the Seamless? What would you think about Neapolis? What would you think about the Nerd Bar? What would you think about the venues? The venues are awesome. Uh, the Nerd Bar, so I've been in the Nerd Bar before, before I came to LFC 26, and I honestly didn't know how they were going to fit a cage in there. So I, I was like expecting it to be like small and kind of cramped, but honestly, it was a really great venue. I really like when the girls are uh, in the cage, but I kind of like the uh, I kind of like the wrestling ring better, to be honest. The the other two events I went to was both wrestling rings. Well, I got to say this. I think it was a it was an interesting change for sure. And we had to see some names. We got to see Katie Forbes up in there, the girlfriend of one Rob Van Dam. We got to see a lot of yes. returns like Sheila Crash Cardinal. We got to see the normals like, you know, Ali Baby Doll Parks, Jesse El Toro Santos, Monica Flower Bomb Garcia. So it made for a hell of a night. And Shea the Fox Mazzotto will become an LFC champion. Then the next night, here's Andrea the Storm Vladoy as a champ. So it was a very, it was a very eventful in the last couple of events. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, I missed LFC 28 because that was kind of like, um, <clears throat> kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but LFC 29, I definitely was able to make it to. I should be able to make it to LFC 30. Hopefully, they're doing something crazy for the, the 30th anniversary. Yes, sir. And now I look at it like this because I know you and I are both fans of it, but we also see the misconception that some people have like, oh, it's just, you know, girls in a lingerie. Yes, they are beautiful. Yes, they are sexy. But we got a lot of badass girls, man, in the LFC training at Syndicate MMA and all over Las Vegas. Greg Frito, who was mentored by Floyd Mayweather Sr. There's a lot that goes into a trap. Yeah, I'm actually friends with Greg Fredo, and he actually trained my – he helped train my wife for her MMA debut, believe it or not. Yeah. And um, it's kind of a small world out here, small MMA world out here. Everybody kind of works with everybody. But um, as for the the LFC, like the controversial side of LFC, so, so I'm not going to lie. Like back in Ohio, I used to – I don't know if you know this, but I used to manage MMA fighters and sponsor MMA fighters and help promote MMA fighters. Mm-hmm. And um, most of those were female MMA fighters. And so LFC was kind of on my radar for a long time. But to be honest, I never took it seriously because of the name and because of, you know, the whole lingerie thing. Mm -hmm. And so I I really didn't take it seriously. I kind of thought it was pretty stupid, to be honest. And I came over here to Las Vegas, and everything started going good for me in Las Vegas. And then one day, uh, I, I get hit up by LFC asking me to be a guest judge. And I'm like, okay, that's really random, but sure, yeah, I'll, I'll come be a guest judge and check it out. <laughs> and um, so I came there, man, with I, I got to admit, I had low expectations. I thought I was going to come there, I thought I was going to see a bunch of fake you know, a bunch of fake wrestling moves and a bunch of perverts sitting around watching this shit. And a lot of people, I can cuss on this, right? Yes, sir, you can. Okay, so a lot of uh, a lot of people get the misconception that that's what it is, and even I did, because, I mean, lingerie fighting champions. Yes, I understand. And uh, I show up, man, and I see these girls getting there, and they are really competing, and they are, I mean... Uh, it, again, it's it's obviously pro wrestling and MMA a mix. So, I've cornered fighters before, I've coached fighters before, uh, coach rap grappling tournaments. I know, and I have a boxing history too. So I know what real grappling is. I know what real striking is. I know what fake striking is and fake grappling is. And I'm sitting here, man, and I'm seeing like, I, I'm I, it like impresses me from the first the first match. These girls are are really talented they're really beautiful you know it's not just random girls i'm i'm, I'm seeing these girls that used to to uh wrestle in the wwe mm-hmm. and stuff like that and i'm like whoa man like this really 
this is actually really cool, and the name totally catches you off guard. But if you go and you watch these events, man, these girls are so talented. And it's not just about the lingerie. And the thing I like about the lingerie, though, is it kind of brings in a fan base. It, it almost it almost like introduces a fan base that wasn't really in the MMA before. You know what I mean? And it's helping uh, bring pro wrestling fans in the MMA. So I'm all for it, man. Like before I came over there and before I, I seen it in every event, uh, it just gets better and better for me. But before I, before I seen it, I wasn't really a fan of it. I came as, you know, with low expectations. They blew that out the water, man. And now I'm like a hardcore fan of these girls. Like <laughs> it, it, It's really cool. And I'm starting to know the, I'm starting to learn the storylines and, yeah, man, I'm getting really into it. Okay. I do have a couple things I want to add, Mr. Judge, because I saw you doing your thing on and We're going to talk about your videos. But, you see, you actually segued into something very cool because, yes, there are a lot of former WWE talents and current former WWE talents in LFC. Uh, pr- perfect example, Trap. I mean, the former uh, Roxy Roundhouse Michaels, the former LFC champ, a.k.a. Renee Michelle, is on doing her thing now on WWE on Raw with her husband, Drake Maverick, the former rock star Spud. So you see a lot of pro right. wrestling tie-ins, man. I think that's very cool about it. And like you said, you look at the name and then it comes in. And I'm going to put this to you because I think you'll like this analogy. Like, I'm a fan of Invicta. I like Invicta. You know, Shannon Knapp's promotion. You know, Shayna Baszler was there. The Cindy Dandois, Jessamyn Dukes, who are now in NXT, right? Think of it as like yeah. Invicta, but, you know, with less clothing. Yeah, 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 definitely. You got a point. And to be honest, I honestly, like, like, I love MMA. But to me, this is funner. <laughs> like, just the way that they do everything is, it like, Obviously, girls and thongs, that's always nice. But, you know, that that's like the least the least part of it. Like these girls, they really – they have fun and mm-hmm. they make you a part of the show. And it's interactive. And the, these girls, the promoters, uh, Sean Donnelly, everybody really does a great job of, of putting on a real show. Like I've been to MMA events before. You look around, you see everybody on their fucking cell phones you know, posting selfies and shit like that. On and uh, LFC, everybody's paying attention to the girls, the the fights, the the promote. You know, the event. It's it's all it's all a great show, man. I love what they do. I think they do great with live events. I gotta say this to you. We also did see the because uh, I saw you judging doing your thing at LFC twenty six, but we also saw someone from the pro wrestling world in there, Mister Austin Aries, former Ring of Honor. Yeah, champion. yeah, Austin Aries. He's a cool man. Uh, that was the first time I ever met him. And uh, yeah, we we got along really well. We were we were having a fun we were having a fun time judging together. <laughs> yeah, him and his uh, was it the sailor hat man? You know, all captain. Like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, we were kind of learning the ropes at the same time. And I guess he was he he knew a couple of the girls in there, so he was telling me a little bit of history and to help me learn as well. Not you. Well, I think you excelled at that, and I can't wait to see what you do more with judging man at LFC. No, I appreciate it, man. You are very welcome. Speaking of this, I have to mention this to you because I was looking at your social media and you did one other thing I got to mention wrestling. We got to talk about Two Kings, man. I saw that photo with you and Jerry the King Lawler, the WWE Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, you got to talk to me about meeting the King, man, the Jerry the King Lawler. Oh, hey, man. Dude. So this is the funniest thing ever. So uh, we're doing a music video for Pharrell Williams. So I'm an actor. I, I'm sure you know that. Yes. And... um. I was the main cameo for the Pharrell Williams Yellow Beezy video. You can look it up on YouTube. It's called Rich Motherfucker. And um, we were filming at the Palms. And there's obviously a bunch of cameras around. And, uh, you know, these, and we all look like we're somebody's because we're all dressed up and in makeup and everything. And the king, like, fucking king comes walking to the Palms door with his wife and, like, some other family members and stuff like that. And I just look over and I'm like, is that, is that the fucking King? What the hell? <laughs> like, and uh, everybody looked over and his wife was like pointing, trying to get a picture with uh, Yella Beezy. Cause she's seen that he was obviously a rapper and there's cameras and everything all around. So she was like, let me get a picture with him. Can I get a picture with him? And uh, we was like, hell yeah. You know, as long as we can get some pictures with you. <laughs> So, so uh, I went over there, kind of got some pictures with Jerry, and told him I was a big fan and shit like that. And uh, I'm a big mark, of course. Like I'm not. I'm. It's funny because like I know a lot, I have a lot of celebrity friends, and I don't go crazy over anybody. But when it comes to pro wrestlers, man, like those motherfuckers, I grew up on them. 
You know what I mean? I'm a I'm a '90s kid, so the Attitude Era was my thing. And um, she's taking pictures with this guy, and the funniest part about it is she had no idea who the hell he was. <laughs> she just knew he was somebody famous because all the all the cameras and stuff around her. So it was kind of like a, a awkward, funny situation. Like she wanted, you know, a photo op with somebody. She had no idea who the hell they were. But um, he's a really cool guy, man. He was uh, he was totally down to earth. Came with his WWE shirt on, so he definitely wasn't hiding or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, I mean, the man's legend, AWA champion, the bouts as he had with Bret Hart, Kurt Hennig will be here all day. Hall of Famer, announcer, man on the moon, man. Him and Jim Carrey, hell yeah. Good. See, I I kind of I was a little bit. Um, after that, see, I know him as the, you know, the guy screaming puppies yes. when girls get naked. <laughs> I know him as, uh, the king, the announcer, you know, I'm not really like, I didn't really follow like the eighties wrestling and stuff like that. But when it comes to like, um, late nineties, probably from like 97 to 2001, mm-hmm. I know like everything about pro wrestling. I was such a big fan during that time. That, that, to me, was the golden years. See, i got to give you respect for that, because 97 had one of the integral moments with the Montreal Screwjob with Bret Hart going to WCW, and then going, oh, to, yeah. Yeah, then going towards the end where everything closes, and WWE's like the only game in town, and the invasion angle, the alliance with Heyman. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good time. It's crazy how deep that story goes, man. It <laughs> and does. how real it is, too. It is. Uh, and I just look at it too, like like you were talking about here. Here's the funny thing, like Jerry Lawler. That's I'll be honest with you. I came into the game late too, like around that time period. And yes, Jerry Lawler was known for puppies, puppies. Jr. Look, the puppies, puppies, puppies. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. what you. So that's what you got into. But yeah, I appreciate that, man. And by the way, I gotta tell you something. I did listen to that song, Yellow Beezy, Rich Motherfucker, dude. That is a badass song. I saw you in the video drinking the champagne, giving the old pound, <laughs> doing your thing. Yes. Yeah, it was actually Diet Coke. They made it look like champagne. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, whatever. You, you were sipping on yeah. something there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's kind of funny about that. I showed up to be uh, background work. So I thought I was going to be background work for that. And I showed up and there was like, I want everybody wearing a suit except for you. I want you to wear this. And then we're going to unbutton it a little bit. Nah, I'm buttoning it a little more. Eh, even more. Next thing you know, I look like a fucking... Like a, a '80s sugar daddy from Miami, <laughs> so they got me, they got me all decked out, man, and I'm I'm the main cameo in the video, so that's pretty cool. It is, man. I liked it. And you're, yes, like your '80s sugar daddy pimp. You're kind of looking like Huggy Bear, like your Starsky and Hutch, Brewski. Yeah, it's almost like a thing now, man. Like every time I show up to a event now, I try to dress like. Um, like a hidden GTA character or some shit, you know? <laughs> well, I look at it like you, like how you present yourself. Like, you know, you're not a YouTuber, I'm a fucking gangster. And then the build up going into <laughs> LFC, you're in the limo, you got the women about you. you. You are legit like a like a Ric Flair almost, you know? You see these shoes that cost more than your house. All I need you to do is just start saying <laughs> woo, man. Yeah, one day one day I'll be flying those jets and shit too. <laughs> Limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling, son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah it's, it's all just like uh it's all just a character but you know it's 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 me at the same time it's something that i've always i've always seen myself doing and stuff and now that it, it's wild man like coming here two years ago like the first year that i was here i basically was just struggling and then the second year i was here i was just like figuring shit out and then out of nowhere you know it, it, i kept going through these trials and tribulations and I don't know if you know this, but I was homeless a little while ago, and it's it's pretty crazy, man. Like going from sleeping in your car at the Circus Circus Hotel parking lot to, uh, for example, tomorrow I'm gonna be on cable TV uh, hosting a show, <laughs> you know, hosting a, a fight show actually, and it's just it's a wild ride, man. It really is, and uh, I hope my story inspires other people to do the same because. Even though it wasn't the smartest thing to come out here with with no – like I came out here with no job, no family out here, no friends out here, no money, no plans, no anything. Just like, OK, we're going to get in the car and follow my dreams and somehow I'm going to make it. And I, I used to say I wouldn't suggest that to anybody. But you know what? It's better than flipping burgers your whole life. That's true. And I'll be honest with you. A lot of people like flipping burgers their whole life, which is cool. And some people yeah, get that's, that. Yeah, that's cool too. Exactly. Yeah. But you kind of had that very DIY do it yourself mentality. It's like, you know what? I'm going to get my car. I'm going to follow my dreams. And you're on the road and you're progressing on doing that trap. Yeah, I was fired from every single job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
and unless it came here it's funny because like i tell people like i'm not a stable guy i'm kind of crazy and like in ohio where everything's normal i'm crazy but out here where crazy you can you can make money and entertain people from your instability and they call it talent so <laughs> that's where i'm at right now <laughs> I just also wanted to reiterate to what you actually said earlier, because we were talking about Syndicate MMA. We were talking about Las Vegas, right? Greg Fredo. Dude, I saw, I've seen, I've seen, I'll give a shout out to your wife. I've seen the mob wife doing her thing, and you too, and, you, and you're practicing with your kid, you're sparring with the kid. I love that, man, because you can't be family. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's a, she's a tough mom, man. She's, <clears throat> she's definitely mom over everything else. She's the best mother I know, for sure. And I appreciate that, man. Like I said, I think you two just together, whether you're just doing your thing, you're sparring, you're acting, which, by the way, Clicker the Clown, my dude, that was that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pretty crazy, man. I think that was actually my first, one of my first gigs out here. Well, I got to tell you, I think just the way that you did it, like it's like that horror film, like you know, it kind of deal, but minus, you know, being in the sewer, telling them you all float down here, you're just coming <laughs> yeah. straight at them. Yeah, see, like the whole, the whole, um, like the, his mannerisms and stuff like that. That was my idea, but the whole production and everything that none of that was written by me. But, um, yeah, I'm basically, I'm, I'm basically just the talent, but I'm like slowly starting to learn how to, how to do the producing and stuff like that. Like for, for this new movie I'm going to be in, it's called, believe it or not, it's called cupcake. And, uh, which is kind of a, you know, fairy name, but whatever. I'm sure there's a lot of fairy shit I'll have to do in this business. <laughs> and uh, so for this film, I'm going to be uh, the location manager. So I'm like, I'm learning all this stuff as I go, man. Like I've only been to a couple acting classes and stuff like that. And uh, I obviously used to produce um, in Ohio. I used to do like documentaries and stuff. I did a documentary with Gary Goodridge and uh, all my little vlog stuff with, the mob wife so i should obviously that helped and yeah man so it's all just a, a learning process out here just building well that's what i appreciate man whether you're doing that you're doing the oath outbreak i mean i'll be honest with you i really do enjoy what you're doing i can tell you're very passionate about what you're doing and i'm gonna say this to you right now with the utmost sincere and respect to you mr gambino i truly wish you nothing but the continued success and happiness I appreciate that, brother. Likewise. Ah, now, okay, we got to talk about this because I've seen you and another tough MMA fighter, Mr. Slap for Cash. Dude, the, the whole thing <laughs> with Logan Paul. We, we got to talk about this. The whole thing with Logan Paul. I'll let you go ahead, <clears throat> sir. Okay, so so I'm going to start. I don't know how much time you have. No, but we're I can good. start from the beginning. Go ahead, man. Um, so I used to train at... Well, I guess not really train there, but I used to work out at Las Vegas Athletic Club, and it's a really popular gym. A bunch of famous people work out and stuff there, too. And Slap for Cash works out there, too. And me and him always used to see each other in the sauna. We never said shit to each other. We was around the same size, and we're you know every time we're in there, we're both headphones on, sweating, looking tough, mean, so we don't really... You know, we're not really the most approachable guys. So we kind of knew of each other but we didn't really talk and then one day i got um a follow on instagram and it was from this guy named i didn't even know his name was slap for cash but i was like slap for cash what the hell and i'm checking him out i'm like oh this is the guy from the gym that's 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 ironic and i see that he was a uh, bodyguard for nick diaz and shit like that and all these other celebrities. So I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, we're kind of close without even knowing it. <laughs> so he hit me up and was like, hey, man, uh, my boy was just talking about you because um, he trains too. And he was looking for a big guy to work with and all that stuff. And he was like, hey, man, my boy was just talking about you. And I recognize you from the sauna and shit like that. We should link up sometime. And I was like, hell yeah, brother, let's link up sometime. And he, you know, showed me what he did with the slap for cash shit. And I was telling him about what I do. And um, so we, um, you know, we were just talking online for a while. And then I seen, this was before the Logan Paul incident. So, and then he sent me a picture uh, a couple weeks after he started following me of him and Logan Paul together. And I'm like, hell yeah, man, that's cool. You know, get, getting that, uh, getting, getting that clout, getting that content and shit like that. And I didn't know about the slap. <laughs> so so he just sent me the picture. You know, he's one of those cryptic motherfuckers. So uh, 
he sent me the picture and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. So he told me, you know, he, he told me to check out his page. I check out his page and it's like went from 2k followers to literally 16k. I'm like, damn bro. That's, that's crazy. Just from fucking with Logan Paul. And I think nothing of, and I still didn't see the slap video. And I'm sitting here watching a podcast that I always watch, which is called Fighter and the Kid with Brendan Schwab and Brian Callum. Might as well give them a shout out because it's a great podcast. And uh, all of a sudden they were talking about this guy named Slap for Cash who just got knocked out by Logan Paul. (laughs) And I'm like, what the fuck? And I see the video and I'm like, oh my God, dude. So I call this guy right away. I'm like, you know, what the hell's going on and shit like that. And he told me, you know, we're going to talk in person. So I was like, cool. Uh, he said, come over right now. I've got a couple, got a couple people over here. And Nick Diaz was over there too. And Nick knows my wife. So I was like, cool. I'm gonna come over here, bring a bottle, you know, bring a little bit of smoke for me and Diaz, of course. And, uh, we're gonna have some fun and talk some business and maybe some potential content. So I go over there and we bullshit and, uh, get fucked up with Nick Diaz and um, it was that dude can drink like no other by the way and I'm not really a drinker that dude drinks uh, like crazy so um, yeah uh, long story short I end up becoming like kind of like his manager so I'm like like professional wrestling style manager not like a real manager you know what I mean mm-hmm. like a, like no contract or anything like that but I become like his manager and um, I get him the the interview with Kenny Ko, and that's when things really blew up. And we did the interview with Kenny Ko, and basically calling Logan Paul out and all that shit. And we made Entertainment Tonight. Um, so many other like I can't even think of, like uh, Drama Alert, which is a big a big YouTube thing. Uh, made it all over the internet, man, and. Logan Paul accepted the fight, then he backed out, and all this is public as well, and then apparently he accepted again, but they're going to have to wait or some shit, so in all honesty, man, like, it was cool for me while it lasted, but like, I was, it was just getting so fucking old, and it was consuming everything in my life, because like, Logan Paul is way bigger than me right now, obviously, yeah. I mean, he's an A-list celebrity, so, like, everywhere I go, it was just, like, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, and I'm just the fucking manager. Like, I can't imagine how bad it is for this guy. <laughs> and uh, so, like, it was just, like, I had to meet up with this guy every day and shit like that, which is cool, you know, that's what a manager has to do, and you got to do that for content if you're part of the story and the vlogs and the documentaries and all that shit. But I got so much business of my own to do that we kind of mutually separated in the in the with the Logan Paul incident. Like I'm not, I was gonna be there during the fight and everything like that. I don't want to be there anymore. I'm not. It's kind of just getting old to me. So I'm gonna watch him from the outside, and that's, that's gonna be fun. But man, Logan Paul kind of dragged that shit out way too far, to be honest, man. Like we were ready to go. We were ready to go to L.A. And 12 hours before, you can you can look this all up online, 12 hours before the motherfucker backs out saying he has, has a Forbes interview. So so I don't know how long a Forbes interview takes, but we were ready to go to fight, and then he did that, and then it just kind of like, you know, just kind of drained me, man. Like I was just kind of done with it after that. So hopefully the fight still happens. I'll definitely watch it. I'm definitely rooting for my homie Slap for Cash, but I, I won't be a part of it anymore. I will say this. I did see all that play out and just, yeah, I did see the timeline. You were like posting like, yeah, it's like, how long? I'll be honest with you. I'll even say this. How long does it take to do a Forbes interview? I'm like, okay. Exactly. Uh, like, right. come on, dude. Like, come on, man. And it, Like five hours at the most to set up and all that bullshit. <laughs> you know? And I'm just saying, I'm a podcaster, journalist, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. It doesn't even take me that long to fucking, all right, whatever. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I digress. And I'm like, dude, like, I'll be honest with you. I hope it does happen because I've seen Slap for Cash. The dude's a tough son of a bitch. He's a hell of a fighter. That slap was amazing. And I really hope everything comes into fruition on that. And I know it drained the hell out of you, Mr. Manager. But you did your thing. I think everybody told their story very well. And I enjoyed what we had. And I was very entertained by it. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted, man, for sure. On my end, I mean, it's still fun watching it. But um, it was just like, man, it was just taking up way too much of my time and way too much effort and way too much travel. And I'm just like, uh, I'm just kind of done with this. 
But um, I definitely, I'm still rooting for my buddy. We're still friends, you know. Nothing bad happened. We just, we're way too busy for each other right now. Got you. I, Actually, he's in, he's in California training his ass off for this fight. Believe it or not. I don't blame him. I mean, I've been seeing him. I'll be honest with you. The last thing I saw a trap was him just training, so that doesn't shock me. I think he trains hard, dude. I see you training your ass off with Syndicate or just like spawn like you do. Like I can tell, like you're very serious of what you do, and again, that's why I respect you because I, I enjoy like the work you put in, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I definitely want to fight one day. That's kind of why I came out here, mm-hmm. but um, it's just. I guess destiny had a different thing for me for now, but it's crazy, man. Like I, I ride in these limos. I got, you know, I've been in the limos. I've been in the nice hotel suites. I've been in the fucking music videos. I've been in the, the shows, the TV, all that shit is cool. But like, I want to fight, man. Like nothing can take that away from me. Like it's, it's really in me as much as I, I even tried for a while. I was like, man, maybe I'll just go with the show business shit. Maybe I don't have to fight. It's like the more I get into it, the more I want to fight. And I feel like as soon as I have enough money to have like a full fight camp without without worrying about, you know, bills and all that other shit, because you have to be all in, not one foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I have that, I'm definitely going to fight and I'm definitely going to pamper myself for this fight and make sure that I'm prepared and ready and get a get in good shape, you know. And make it happen, man. It's definitely my dream and my main goal. I got to say this to you as well, because I'm going to use a rap reference here. I said, you're kind of like Mac-10 featuring his wife at the time, T-Vibes. Hustle right till ain't nothing left. You keep it tight to death. I think that pretty much sums you up. Right there. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I like that. You're welcome. Well, dude, that also segues me, dude. I want it all. You're doing mi- your mixtape. You're rapping. I've seen your stuff. I mean, you're, you're, you're spitting bars. You're doing music. You're doing acting. It's like, really, what can't you do, Trap? Yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy, man. Like, um, I don't know. Like, when people ask me what the hell I do, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, I used to say, you know, I'm an entertainer, or I'm in show business, or I'm an internet personality. I really don't know what the fuck to say. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of like just I'm a guy. You know, I do this, I do that, yeah. I dabble into all this. Yeah. And then they think I'm just broke and don't have a job or something. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, when people look at podcasting and stuff, it's like, oh, you just talk in front of a mic. I'm like, no, there's more that goes into this. And yeah, then- yeah, yeah. People don't know, man. Like the, That's why I like um, out here in Las Vegas. Um, I don't know if you've ever been out here, but everybody's like a dream chaser out here. Everybody gets it, and everybody understands. Like, there's money to be made in the entertainment industry. Unlike in Ohio, you know, I was – in a small town where everybody's working factory jobs and I'm sitting here talking about I'm going to be world famous and shit and everybody's <laughs> laughing at me like shut the fuck up and go get a job and, you know? and I'm like no man I'm going to be famous I'm going to be on TV I'm going to be in movies and that and like nobody where I'm from makes it so I, I honestly don't blame them but it does kind of feel good to like look back and be like you know look at me now <laughs> Exactly. And that's the thing. I'm going to say, I've said this since the beginning, hard work pays off. And for you, I just want to say this, because we were talking about MMA and pro wrestling, and I just wanted to ask you this. What do you think about the overall tie-ins over the years? Because we've seen like likes of Ken Shamrock, your Dan Severns, your Tank Abbott's, you know, what Ronda Rousey's done, and you know, CM Punk evil dab- dabbled into it. But what do you think about the old MMA pro wrestling tie-ins and correlations that we see, Trap? Yeah, you know what? I would like to see more of it, to be honest. Um, I hate this thing where... MMA thinks it's a sport. I really, really am not a fan of that. I wish they would just be like, okay, look, we're a spectacle. This is what we do. We're here to sell sell tickets. And I know like – I feel like 10% of the I, – I could be totally wrong with this. But I feel like 10% of the fans want to see a sport. And I feel like the rest of them just want to see crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. So in my – like this is my vision, man. Like to be honest, I – this is another thing I want to do one day. I want to run my own promotion. And I want to do at least one event and see how it happens. And it's it's believe it or not, it's really not that hard to put on an MMA promotion event as long as you're in a sanctioned, you know, a sanctioned st- – honestly, it might be easier to do it in unsanctioned <laughs> places like an Indian casino or something. But um, it's not that hard to do and it doesn't take that much money to do it at least once. Like to be consistent with it and to be successful with it and make money on it, it's fucking nearly impossible unless you're really good. But to just put a one-off 
and like, you know, you're going to lose money for sure, but it's possible to do. You're going to lose money, but it's possible. So I'm okay with losing money as long as I put on a good show. And if it's good enough, I won't lose money in the end. So I, I have this vision, man, of, of fighters coming through, you know, like the pro wrestling shit, like the fire, the Titan Trons, um, you know, the big, you know, like when, you know, when raw started in like the, the early two thousands, late nineties, you had the, the crazy fireworks yeah, and the stuff crazy like that. Pyro like, and the crazy yes. engines, yeah. That's what I want, man. I want the fighters to get up in the cage or whatever the hell they have. And that, that's another thing. I don't like the cage, but, um, to get up in whatever the hell they have and, you know, I want it to be like a spectacle more than more than a sport because I feel like we're getting lost in, in the sports shit. Like now we got rankings and those rankings yeah. don't even make sense. And uh, it's like it's just boring. Like when when the real sport happens, it, it's all right. But then when crazy shit happens, like that thing with Jorge Masvidal and Ben Askren, yeah. you've probably seen that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it you know it get, it goes viral. So, like, it's obvious what sells and what people want to see. I don't know why they're making this a sport. I really don't. But it, it's kind of cool at the same time, too, because it's official, you know. And at least we're being taken seriously. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. And I'm sure, personally, I mean, what from what you're telling me, as I look in Las Vegas, like Killer Cross, you know, who's a big MMA fan, pro wrestler, he just had his own show, National Born, Bachelor Born Killers, man. Freaking Dan Severn was on the show, Stefan Bonner. So you got Las Vegas. This is a big, it's a big MMA city. It's the MMA capital, pretty much. There's a lot that goes into it. And Dream Chasers, like you mentioned. So I want to see that happen for you. And I just want to see everybody just do their thing, man. Yeah, absolutely. I think the more the better, man. Like, I don't think you can oversaturate the market of MMA because it's so new and there's so many, there's not a lot of fighters. You know what I mean? Like, everybody sees this shit on TV and they think, oh, man, it's, you know, you probably, there's so many people in it. Not really. Like, I know, like, half of the MMA fighters in the UFC. Like, it's really a small, it's a small community. It is, and I'll be honest with you, there, like you mentioned, there's no oversaturation for it. Me, I'm all for it. I just, personally, I'm looking forward to both, because everything's an art form, man, whether it be music, MMA, pro wrestling, it's all an art form, and whatever, you know, comes over later in the years, or whatever happens in months, years from now, I just want to see everything continue to grow and succeed, and I think you feel the exact same way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I haven't watched WWE in forever, man, to be honest. I haven't watched wrestling in forever, and um, it's weird because, like, even though I haven't watched it, I can tell that there's, like, this resurgence going on right now with the – I think it's called AEW yep, or something like wrestling, that. Yep. Yeah, and, like, I'm, I'm seeing this everywhere with the New Japan and everything, man. I'm like – like, I can't avoid it. I'm seeing it everywhere. So, obviously, something's going on right now. <laughs> It, it's interesting because you have guys like Cody Rhodes. Now, this is Cody Rhodes, the son of the late great Amok and Dream Dusty Rhodes. you got the Young Bucks, who are top talents in Ring of Honor, New Japan. They've been everywhere, Trap. So you have them coming up with this promotion. They're bringing in all these new talents, and now they're going to be on TNT, like WCW used to be back in the day. we got New Japan coming to the States and taking their shows to, like, California and all over the place. They're going to be in New York in September. So, I mean, like, there's a lot of stuff coming through, man, and it's a very exciting time for pro wrestling. Yeah, it's very interesting, man. Um, I'm doing a show tomorrow where we're actually talking about all that. and I'm going to have to do my research because uh, there's so many local, even like local wrestling shows around here in Las Vegas that uh, I'm going to have to start learning and stuff like that. Just like um, with the LFC and hopefully I can make some appearances and, you know, get deeper into it. Oh, perfect one in Las Vegas. Future Stars of Wrestling, man. That's the big one in Las Vegas. Future Stars of Wrestling. Yeah, for sure. I know about them. I'm actually following them on Facebook. Hell yeah. All right. So, Mr. Gambino, I'm going to say this. I actually have a couple final things I want to add, and I'm going to say this to you. Anytime you want to come back on the show, you're more than welcome to. I had a blast talking to you tonight. Hell yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, you're very Likewise. Good. Thank you. Uh, sir, what we like to do with this, we inspire and encourage, and I know a lot of people will be inspired and encouraged by your story, but for you who's doing, you know, looking with MMA, I'm talking about music videos, acting, rapping, doing your thing, and doing as only as you can do, Trap Gambino, what advice would you give to anybody that wants to pursue any endeavor that we just mentioned, anything in life? Um, you know what? Sacrifice, I think, is the most important thing. Um, sacrificing what 
what you think will happen over what you hope will happen. And believe it or not, faith has a lot to do with everything. Um, kind of like how I just like, I packed up everything in a car. I didn't really have enough gas money to even make it here, but I kind of just, I knew, I knew that destiny was going to take care of us. And the further I got away from my home, the more impossible it was to call people to help me and stuff like that. But the more, so the more scared I got, but the more free I felt and when I got here, I, I went through so much struggle, so much tribulations and being homeless with my wife beside me, my kid behind me in the car. And, you know, my kids ask me why she's not sleeping in the bed. Worst thing that's ever happened to me, but the best thing that's ever happened to me at the same time. Sacrifice is the most important thing, man. If I would have gave up, if I would have just said, fuck it, I'm going to buy a bus ticket and come back home or, you know, I'm going to just – I'm going to give up on this and just go back home and be normal. I would never be where I'm at right now. So I think sacrifice is the most important thing. And even though it, it sucks, it's going to be so worth it in the end. First and foremost, beautifully said, sir. And number two, Las Vegas is your home and your home is, is badass, man. And you're doing your thing. So. Absolutely. All right. Now this is where I step back. Mr. Chat Gambino, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, upcoming events. The floor is yours. Take it away, sir. Sure. Um, my Instagram is Trapping Over Vegas, and that is the same name as my YouTube, Trapping Over Vegas. I got all my crazy content on there. You can watch Ashley choke out a bunch of dudes, um, or you can follow her. I might as well give her a shout out at The Mob Wife, and I'm on her Instagram too. Facebook is just Trap Gambino. Uh, YouTube, Google, you can just Google my damn name, and all my shit will come up. <laughs> but, uh, Mostly YouTube and Instagram is what I'm what I'm trying to really build right now. So YouTube and Instagram is trapping over Vegas. All right. The links will be in the description. And since you politely said it, I will also put in Mob Wipes in there so everybody can check out Ashley. Oh, Mob thank Wipes. you, man. Appreciate that. It's my pleasure. So, Mr. Trap Gambino, before we even close this out, do you have any final words for your fans and your supporters, Mr. Gambino? Um. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of people out there that um might get the – the wrong conception about me personally uh everybody has trolls right yes um my trolls are like trolls 2.0 so i just want to i just want to tell them like i get it it's fun to troll people online it's fun to it's fun to have fun and and make fun of people and stuff like that i'm not i used to be butthurt about it and everything like that and i'm not really into that anymore after you know it's a lot easier to deal with it when you're successful than when you're homeless so they were doing it when i was homeless they're still doing it when i was successful and uh it feels a lot better now but i just want to tell those guys like just don't don't take everything so damn seriously this is all show business this is all entertainment and in the end whether you hate me and you're you know you clicking mad faces on my stuff or you love me and you're clicking hearts on my stuff and you see me with girls and all this – the limos and stuff and it pisses you off. And it's all just entertainment, man. Like it's it, it's nothing to be serious about. And it's just all fun and I'm literally just doing it for everybody who was told that they couldn't fucking do it. So <laughs> that, that's about it, man. Ah, again, man, like I said, very blunt and very honest and that's how you have to be in life. So I personally, I dig what you're saying and all I can say about this to you is – all right, I'm going to use another rap quote. You're kind of like Ice Cube and Crazy Bone. You know, get your mind right, get your grind right. 1999, until we rich. I see you. So, Hell yeah. Mr. Trap Gambino, it's been an absolute pleasure. So, for Trap Gambino, my name is Mike Larkin. This concludes another edition of On the Mic with Mike. And once more, Trap, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you too, brother. All righty, guys, we are out. Talk to you in the next episode.